Hey, Steve Nani here at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts, and that's spelled B-E-R-N-A-R-D-S-T-O-N, Bernard Stun, for anybody who wants to come shopping and check this place out. But anyway, we're doing the junkyard crawl. Now, back in June, we brought you a video on this 1987 Lasharo Winnebago RV. We described how there were two generations. The first gens made between 1983 and 1986, and the second gens made between 1987 and 1992. This is a second generation Lasharo by Winnebago. What does the first gen look like? Follow me. Well, this is a first generation Lasharo by Winnebago. Now, of course, we have to remember that the Lasharo is based on a Renault front-wheel drive French chassis that was shipped here in knockdown, not complete form to Winnebago's plant in Minnesota. And if you wondered, by the way, the term Winnebago actually stems from the original location of the Winnebago motorhome factory in Winnebago County, Iowa. Again, they're located in Minnesota now, but now we know what Winnebago means. And of course, Lasharo is a, an American Indian term that doesn't mean snail, but rather means chief. But anyway, the whole point of these things was in the 1974, the federal government mandated a 55 mile per hour speed limit in response to OPEC and improving the fuel economy. The prediction was we'd save about 2.5% uh, in gasoline, which would be a significant number. The reality was from 19 1974 through 1995, the national speed limit of 55 maybe saved 1%. It was a flop. It also was a major source of income for a lot of states. But with that said, in a world where you couldn't go more than 55 legally on the interstate, vehicles like this made sense. Now, the uh, Lasharo was meant for Class C uh, motorhoming, where these are shorter, smaller, they almost fit in your garage. But again, with uh, 100 horsepower in the second gen gas versions, or this one here, this is a turbo diesel, these have 75 horsepower, so they probably wouldn't be able to go 70 miles per hour. The reality is, these are great for cruising on the interstate from campground to campground. And that was the business case for these things. They weren't meant to go fast because you couldn't go fast. It was illegal. So in those weird days, that is why these things exist. Now this one here, we see here turbo. That means this one has the optional turbo diesel or had. It's now missing. Uh, but again, the standard naturally aspirated diesel had 50 or 60 horsepower. 60 horsepower. The turbo made that 75 horsepower. And of course, the gasoline version, also a two liter inline four, had 100 horsepower. But again, with the turbo diesel chugging along, this thing could probably crank pretty close to 30 or 40 miles per gallon with the five speed manual transaxle. And again, and the point of this is front wheel drive, the packaging of this thing, the whole business part was up front, which gave plenty of room for Winnebago to add a fiberglass camper body. Now, the thing with this is we'll know that these are made of steel up front, light gate steel. My little magnet sticks to the fenders, to the A pillar, and everything up here is made of steel till you get to the fiberglass camper body, which was, again, added by Winnebago in their Minnesota factory. But again, uh, this is a turbo diesel version. And again, the first gen, these things were made in 1983 through 86. Uh, let's take a look inside. Okay. Take a peek at Shane if you want Super Shane, the camera guy. Uh, this one is still rather complete inside, carpeting on the floors. And again, these things had a 6,200 pound gross vehicle weight, which is like three tons. But again, with 75 horsepower, you weren't going to go very fast. But again, you couldn't, thanks to that speed limit. So up here, of course, cab forward design. And in fact, this gives us a good look at where Renault started and where Winnebago picked it up. The front half of this, we can steal the steel inner structure. Now, these vans were very popular in Europe for delivery. If we come a little closer, we'll see here that there are two skins. Here is the inner structure. The Renault van was available as a normal van, but the extensions here weld on to the outside of the inner birdcage to widen it to meet the Winnebago's fiberglass body. So this is a nice x-ray view of the inside. And in France, again, these things are very popular as flower vans and bread vans, whatever. And again, the beauty of the front wheel drive, there's no drive shaft tunnel, there's no hump, flat floor back here, no axle back there, just a tag axle, a dummy that doesn't do anything at all. And, um, you know, plenty of amenities. Now let's take a peek here. Let's trade spots and let's Let's open this door and see what we find. Three, five, four, two, and oh, oh, don't look in the bowl, don't look in the bowl. But uh, yeah, somebody's done a dry run <laughs> inside of there. But yes, a bathroom in there. And then uh, coming back here, the air conditioner up on the roof. 
and uh, you know, plenty of room to, to sit down and enjoy uh, a pleasant camping experience inside of the refrigerator, or what is this thing here? Yeah, okay, just a little storage box, some of the plumbing, and uh, lots of little cubby holes, and see what we find in here. Ooh nothing okay no gold bars no contraband that's just as well fine with me here's the air conditioner up on the roof and again all fiberglass and wood construction here at the back of this thing to keep it light now again 6200 pounds gross vehicle uh, weight rating which is over three tons but again motoring down the highway in the slow lane at you know 55 miles per hour getting 50 miles per gallon with that diesel up front you could take your your family on a nice summertime vacation um now, one thing about the first generation, you have a smaller rear window um, and some other items. Now, here is one of the wheel arches. Surprisingly, these are steel, not the fiberglass you might expect, but of course, these uh, allow the rear axle to be wide for a good level stance and good handling without having the tires stick out and be illegal. Let's take a walk around to the back of this Le Charro and... Again, for 21 years, the uh, interstate highways were limited to 55 miles per hour. Now, of course, we all know that Sammy Hagar couldn't drive 55, neither could I. Now, most people ignored it, but what it really did was it gave uh, state police uh, forces all over the country a nice source of revenue. Uh, and let's face it, uh, you know, going 60 in a 55, there's nothing dangerous about that. But a lot of people paid a lot of money for that infraction in the name of safety, of course, of course. But another thing, too, about the first generation uh, Le Spart Lecharo is the fact the spare tire is mounted externally on the second gen, which we featured earlier. And in fact, you can check out that video in the link description. Uh, the spare would go inside of a little cubby hole. And uh, the rear window, again, is about half the size on the first gens versus the second gens. And a little more aerodynamic styling on the second gens, which, again, were made 87 through 1992. And again, 21,000 of these things were built uh, in that production run, which ran 83 to 92. So almost 10 years. But something I see on this one is really bizarre, a trailer hitch. Let's think about this. 75 horsepower, three tons, trailer hitch. What on earth are you going to connect to this thing and, uh, and pull? It's not going to slow it down even more. But again, that was the whole thing. The 55 mile an hour speed limit seems to me like a, a bad memory, but I was there for it. Uh, and it was a way of saving fuel. It was a knee jerk reaction. You know, the, the idea was there, but it brought to the world things like this, the uh, Lasharo, which reminds me, um, what did the snail say while riding on the tortoise's back? We Now, that was actually a joke from Kelly Bundy on Married with Children one time, but it kind of uh, tells the story of the Lasharo. It doesn't mean tortoise, but these things were slow as heck. But they made sense in their time. So if you like this video, there's lots more to come here at Bernstein Auto Wrecking. And, and again, be sure to check the, uh, the, genera the second generation Lasharo video here on the Steve Banks YouTube channel. You'll find the link in the description for this video. And we'll get back to the fast lane with our next video. So stick around. There's lots more to come.